In this video, I will explain Simpson's rule for performing numeric integration. Suppose you have to evaluate this definite integral, integral from x0 to xn, fx dx. And you know that the geometric meaning of this definite integral is area under the curve y equal to f of x from x0 to xn. So let this be the curve y equal to f of x. So therefore the value of this definite integral is same as the area under this curve. As in the trapezoidal rule, here also we will be dividing the interval x0 to xn into n equal subintervals. That is x0 x1 first subinterval x1, x2, next subinterval, x2, x3, next subinterval, like that. And each subinterval has length h. Now, in trapezoidal rule, we have approximated this region by a trapezoid by drawing a straight line like this. But in case of Simpson's rule, instead of considering one subregion, we will be considering these two regions together and we will be approximating this one with the help of a parabola. Instead of drawing a straight line like this, we will be fitting a parabola that is passing through these three points. So naturally there will be an error when you approximate by drawing this parabola here. And here, you know that the equation of the parabola is a second degree polynomial. I have drawn this one here. So this is x0, x1, x2. So then this equation of this curve will be a second degree polynomial. So you know how to integrate a second degree polynomial. And we can integrate from x0 to x2 a polynomial. And you can evaluate its value. Actually, we can obtain this one by using one formula called newton cotes formula which is outside the scope of this discussion. Therefore, please understand that by using newton cotes formula, we can find that integral from x0 to xn fx dx will be h by 3 into this term. That is area of this shaded region. And now similarly, by considering the next two subregions, that is from x2 to x4, we can evaluate this integral, that is integral from x2 to x4 fx dx will be this one again by using newton cotes formula. Similarly, by combining two intervals like that, we can find out the region of area of all such subregions. Since we are taking two subregions at a time. In case of Simpson's rule, always number of subintervals n should be an even number. This restriction is not there in trapezoidal rule, but in case of Simpson's rule, the number of subintervals should be an even number. And then after obtaining like this, the value of this integral will be sum of all these terms. And now you can see that this fx0 appears only two times and in the last interval also, last region also you will get one term h by 3 and here you will get f of xn. So this fxn appears only once. But you see the middle terms that is four times, four times f of x1, four times f of x3, and next will be 4 times f of x5 like that. That means all the odd suffix terms appears 4 times. And again, you see this fx2. Here we have one fx2. Here also we have fx2. That is 2 times. And fx4 also appears 2 times. That means all even suffix terms appear 2 times. Therefore, by adding all these terms, 
we can write the formula in this form that is h by 3 into first term last term only once that is f of x naught plus f of xn now then all all suffix terms appears four times therefore 4 into f of x1 plus f of x3 plus f of x5 etc that the last term depends on the number of intervals so now plus two times all other terms that is f of x2 plus f of x4 plus f of 6 etc this one so this is the formula for evaluating this definite integral by using simpson's rule now we'll explain this one with the help of an example for example consider this one we have to evaluate integral 0 to 1 x raised to 4 dx so if we want to use the simpson's rule the value of n should be an even number suppose i am choosing n is equal to 4 then so the value of the interval that size of the interval will be h is equal to xn minus x naught by n that is 1 minus 0 by 4 that is equal to 0.25 then you prepare the table with x values and fx values start with x naught x naught is 0 to this 0 you add this h that is 0 0.25 now again at h to this 0.25 you will get 0.5 and next 0.75 and now next is 1. So now you have to evaluate this fx. So fx means f of 0, f of 0.25, f of 0.5 and f of 0.75 and f of 1. So this is our fx x raised to 4. In that one when you substitute you will get f0 as 0. And now this term is 0 0.0039 and now 0.5 raised to 4 is 0 0.0625 and 0.75 raised to 4 is 0 0.3164 and now last term is 1. And now you see this is our x naught and now this is our x1 and this is our x2 and this is our x3 and this is our x4. And corresponding to these values, we have to write down this formula. So here the formula is h by 3 into first term plus last term. Here first term is f of x0 and last term is f of x4. So therefore the formula will be f of x0 plus f of x4. Now plus 4 into all odd suffix terms. Now in this case odd suffix terms are x1 and x3 therefore we will be writing f of x1 plus f of x3 only two terms in the second bracket in the la here the last term is plus 2 into all even suffix terms here we have only one even suffix terms that is f of x2 so this will be the formula 2 into f of x2 so then close the bracket Actually this 4 is also an even number but we have already included it in the first bracket. So no need to repeat it again. Okay so once if you are writing it here you cannot write it again. So therefore there is only one term in the last bracket that is 2 into f of x2. So now substitute we have f of x0, f of x4 and f of x1, f of x3 and f of x2. Substitute all these values here and the value for h is 0.25. Then computing, you can prove that its value is 0.2005. So this is the value of this integral by using Simpson's rule. But actually by actual integration, you can see that integral from 0 to 1 x raised to 4 dx will be equal to 0.2. So then here we got 0 0.2005, the error is 0 0.0005. So if you want to reduce this error, you have to increase number of subintervals. I have taken only 4 subintervals here. If you are taking 6 subintervals or 8 or 10, you will get more approximate value. 
So the main thing what you have to remember here is if you want to apply Simpson's rule, n should be an even number. And also this trapezoidal rule will sorry compared to trapezoidal rule, the Simpson's rule will give you more accurate value. Thank you.